As part of doing bits and bytes and fairly low level stuff, we have mentioned the possibility of a thing called binary coded decimal and that effectively IBM in their mainframe days led the charge on this. Now, done a video on this and how it led eventually to extended binary coded decimal. I'd like to talk about what is BCD, why is it necessary, and in particular that's to answer a question that I did vaguely think about in my early days of doing heavyweight macho calculations overnight, is effectively, how does this stuff ever get printed out? I thought, well, what's the biggest ratio between actual computation and fairly quick printout as I can think of? Not my quantum calculations, they're minor league. Those of you who are familiar with Douglas Adams and Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, which was made into a BBC series here and also became a movie, I think, will know that Douglas, who was a very far-seeing guy, had this idea of the ultimate computer called Deep Thought. Deep Thought. Do you have a and it was years ahead of his time because I'm pretty sure that Deep Blue, IBM's chess machine, Deep Mind, the AI machine that's doing Go, is it, and so on, and, you know, Deep Learning, Deep Everything, I'm not at all sure it isn't all down to Douglas Adams. I just have to point out here that the ultimate computer was the Earth. Oh, in the and very And end. there will be some fans who point that out, so... Um, oh, I see. So just... Work. But nevertheless, Deep Thought was, uh, was asked, Deep Thought, what is the answer to life, the universe and everything? And several million years later, presumably even with quantum assistance... You're really not going to like it. Tell us! The answer to life, the universe and everything is... <gasps> 42. 42! 42! 42. <laughs> and my first thought when I was laughing out loud at that was, I thought, what's 42 in binary? Is there something special about it? And yeah, how would you convert the binary string for 42 into being literally 4 and 2 on a piece of line printer output? 42 in binary is 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, Zero. How do we know that that's 42? Well, starting at the right, it's powers of 2. So 2 to the 0 is units, then 2s, then 4s, then 8s, then 16s, then 32s. Armed with that knowledge, we say, OK, it's a 2 plus an 8, which is 10, plus a 32 is 42. Pretty good look. A 6-bit representation for a 2-digit decimal number. But if you feed that into a printer, you're not going to get 42 printed out because by and large, they do not interpret binary. So where does the printable form of 42 come from? And the answer is it goes way back to the fact that IBM and their computing machines, way back at the start of the 20th century, they were the Horrith company you know, doing census details, controlling elections from punch cards. And uh, some IBM early electronic computers, I think the IBM 650 was it, actually did work internally on decimal, just like Tommy Flowers. Uh, I think they both used by Quinn. But the pressure was on from binary based hardware to say it's, this is more efficient by far. You may be mad not to use it. OK, says IBM, but although it's got to be a binary representation, we want to directly link it to the decimal that will ultimately be printed out. Now, think about it. That's easy to do. But what would this binary coded decimal be for 42? Every decimal position can range from 0 to 9. So how many bits do we need to represent 9. Well, we know that 3 bits isn't enough. 3 bits goes up to 111, one, one, which is 7, but you need 8 and 9. So you've got to go to that fourth bit. And you end up, of course, with 8 being 1 and 3 zeros, and 9 being 1001. Zero, zero, one. Ah, I hear several of you say, but you don't stop there. You can go on to hexadecimal. And this is precisely the thing with BCD. You must not let it go over into the hexadecimal range from 10 to 16. Because 
the average person wants their answers out in decimal, not in hexadecimal. So here we go then, look. Zero, one, zero, zero, taken as a grouping of bits on its own. That's nothing in the units column, zero in the twos column, one in the fours column, zero in the eights column. That represents decimal form. Right next door to it is a separate four bit entity. If I write down zero, zero, one, zero, that represents a two. In its simplest form, that is what binary coded decimal is. And you just use them in four bit nibbles. Now we all know a nibble is half a byte. A byte equals eight bits. Well, it does in the modern world. So half a byte, well, the name nibble caught on for obvious reasons, a nibble being a small byte. And I'll use an I, but some people like to extend the joke as much as possible and actually spell nibble with a Y. I don't mind. And a nibble can hold a hex digit. You might say, oh, well, that's it then. If I fed 0, 1, 0, 0 down a serial line into a printer, it would cough into life and print 4. No, not quite, but we're getting close. Because what we've got to ask ourselves is, this whole printout thing is treating decimal digits as characters. They're not being thought of in their numeric sense at all. It's just any other character. It's like an A, a B, a Z, an exclamation mark or whatever. The ASCII committee in the 1960s didn't just work in a vacuum. They knew what IBM, who they loved and hated, had been doing for years. And it basically said it is so much easier if you base what's printed ultimately on a B, C, D representation. But put a special marker at the front of the BCD to pad it out to a, an 8-bit byte, but do it in such a way that in a sense the codes that are going to do 0 to 9 are in a sensible place. Now what does that mean? Well let's do ASCII first, even though historically it was second. Um, in ASCII the digits occupy from 3-0 hexadecimal to 3-9 hexadecimal. What it means is if you have got, shall we say this 4, 0, 1, 0, 0, that is your hex nibble for 4. All you have to do to make it printable as an ASCII 4 is to glue on at the left hand end hexadecimal 3, which is the same as decimal 3, is 0, 0, 1, 1. So 0, 0, 1, 1 prepended to 0, 1, 0, 0 gives you an 8-bit entity, which if you fire that down at a line printer, it'll cough into action and print a 4. Notice that when I say glue on at the front, in order for it to be efficient, you don't want to be adding on something that was, will cause carries, if you see what I mean. You need to park it on a multiple of 16, and then what will happen is that whichever way you convert your 4 into being 34 hex, it will not cause ripple carries, which are inefficient. OK, say IBM mainframe types, why not historically tell the youth of today what IBM did originally? Same idea. ASCII learnt a lot from what IBM did. In IBM EBSTIC, you don't prepend a 3 hexadecimal, you prepend an F. One, 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 one. But the principle is the same. Yeah, it's cleanly on that boundary. So that's an absolute crucial fact in making BCD to printed out results be fast and efficient. You need to be able to put something in there that's low cost because you're going to be doing millions of these BCD to ASCII EBSTIC conversions. So that is a very sort of crucial fact to get hold of, to try and reduce the conversion burden before printout. So in many ways then, that's much of the story. If you've once got it into BCD, then both ASCII, or if you're still on IBM mainframes, EBSTIC, do make it easy for you to get into a printable form very quickly. And of course the I.O. routines hidden underneath Fortran and C will be well aware of this. Converting from pure binary 101010 to 42 BCD, 
zero one zero 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 one zero, they look very different. When you get on to telling us how to do it, it's not going to be a cheap operation, is it? Because that's the hard bit. It's all very well saying getting from BCD to ASCII is a piece of cake, but what about getting from binary to BCD? And the answer is there's bound to be overheads there, and it's bound to be something that you probably want to eliminate. And to that effect, some people in the commercial computing sector are saying, look, binary to BCD will turn out to be expensive. Tell you what, if what we do is totally trivial and really isn't rocket science, wouldn't we be better off to try and devise software or even hardware assistance circuits to do all the arithmetic on a BCD notation? Never convert it into pure binary. Because if all you're doing is adding up how many voters in, you know, normal county or something have voted for such and such, you don't need all these huge, great binary things that numerical analysts use. You're just counting numbers. And even if you're looking at somebody's uh, balance in dollars and cents, surely that's simple enough arithmetic. It's better to perhaps pay a little penalty for doing BCD arithmetic because you can overcome that penalty a bit by having specialised hardware. Why not do it all in BCD and then you don't have the binary to BCD overhead? All you have to do after you've done your BCD arithmetic is slip a four Fs on the front end if it's EBSTIC, a three, a three hexadecimal if it's ASCII, and that's it, prints out. There is one classic one where you really can pick up that it's very advantageous to do it in BCD. If you think about the number 0 0.10, which might represent 10 cents, shall we say, you know, your, your bank account's been drained down, it's down to its last 10 cents. So here you've got 0 0.10. That's 0 0.1 in decimal. What is it in binary? Oh dear, you look at what it is in binary, 0 0.30s, 1100, 1100, 1100, and it goes on forever. There is no exact representation of 0.1 decimal as a binary expansion. It just doesn't stop. And accountants and actuaries get paranoid about that. Oh, I know it'll never happen, but I hate the idea that rounding might go wrong and my client should my client's balance might drop to nine cents <laughs> instead of ten cents. How about some other examples of things that use BCD, just to finish off with? I don't know if I've got it here. I might be able to dig it out of there, Sean, eventually. Is a little hand calculator. What better place to use BCD? It's utterly display dominated. Apart from things like square root, that's probably about the most complex thing that you can ask a simple four-function calculator to do. But mostly it's addition, subtractions, div simple divides and uh, all that. They use BCD. Uh, another example of simple devices you see in a shopping mall or whatever that could use BCD, digital clocks. It makes eminent sense to use BCD because it's the display and the change in the display is a happening all the time every second but the actual incrementing is trivial. You don't need to convert into binary to add one second to a digital display. You really don't. Live with the BCD. Focus on the display because that's what matters above all else. The luckless Don was faced with these guys holding this black box and they said, Don, we hear via back channels from your users, they are not happy with the performance of your machine on the, what's it called, the IAS, their database?